So I will be proposing that we should make these changes now because cancer is an incredibly common disease. It's getting commoner. And even if the changes we make make a tiny difference, isn't that worth it? Research in recent years has suggested that anaesthesia may play some role in preventing the recurrence of cancer, but the jury's still very much out on whether that is in fact the case. To find out what this means for anesthesiologists, I'm here with Dr. William Harrop Griffiths. What is the evidence that avoiding specific anesthetics during surgery prevents the recurrence of cancer? Do you know, we've got some evidence that avoidance of inhalational agents, avoidance of opiates, morphine-like drugs, has an impact on the recurrence of cancer after primary cancer surgery. The evidence is not convincing. So the evidence comes from large-scale retrospective studies and comes from animal work and preliminary prospective work in humans. What we long for is the result of randomized controlled trials put together in a meta-analysis. The real question is, do we need to be at the top of that evidence pyramid in order to make a change to what we as anaesthetists do every day? Well, are you proposing that any changes are made now? And if so, what? What I'm talking about is everybody's different. Everybody makes a change at different times. You have to be prepared to make a change in your practice to make a change. So some people will wait until the randomized controlled trials have been published before making that change. Some will wait even longer until there's mandatory national guidance that you have to avoid these drugs in certain patients. Some people like me who love change will make a change earlier. But this is the most important thing. The changes that you would need to make to your technique to conform with what we believe to be true about cancer recurrence cost pence and are safe. So I will be proposing that we should make these changes now because cancer is an incredibly common disease. It's getting commoner. And even if the changes we make make a tiny difference, isn't that worth it? You've said that specific anaesthetics are problematic. Which ones are those? The evidence that we have suggests that all the inhalational agents may impact adversely on your own immune system and also that opiates have that impact as well. But there's another factor. It seems that the stress response to surgery also has an adverse impact on your immune function. So the regional anesthesia, for instance, in itself doesn't prevent cancer recurrence, but by using it, you A, minimize the stress response, and B, you decrease the need for opiates. Propofol, which is the other drug that's been used in some retrospective studies, is being used in some prospective studies. It's not that drug itself. It's the avoidance of the inhalational agents that make propofol probably, possibly, maybe, perhaps, an effective agent in preventing cancer recurrence after surgery. What might be the benefits of making the change? You may benefit one in 10 patients, one in 20 patients, one in 50 patients, one in 100 patients, one in 1,000 patients. We don't know. But even if it's only one in a thousand patients, it may be worthwhile. And the difference you would make that in that one in a thousand patients, their cancer would not come back. I'd take that one in a thousand chance because there's no evidence that using propofol, that using regional anesthesia has significant adverse effects. So possible small benefit, no downside, I'm there. What hurdles would the change involve? There are no regulatory hurdles at all. These are techniques that many, many anaesthetists use in their daily practice. Um, there are people like me who adore regional anaesthesia and never happier than when we've got a syringe full of bupivacaine with a needle on it, poking it into a patient. So it's about mindset. It's like doing anything complex in life. You have a way that you do it, a way that you like doing it, a way that you've taught yourself to do. It works well for you. And if somebody then turns around and says, you should change, it's only human nature to resist. Dr. Harrop Griffiths, that was fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from Euroanesthesia 2019, the European Anesthesiology Congress. For more videos from the Congress, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.